It's really funny because uh, sometime after that, somebody said to me, what happened to Jason Scott Lee? And I said, you know, I actually wonder what happened to us. Jason Scott Lee, most known for playing the title character of Bruce Lee in the biopic Dragon the Bruce Lee Story, was born on November 19, 1966 in Los Angeles, California to a Chinese Hawaiian father and a Chinese mother. The family moved to Hawaii when Jason was two, where he grew up. His interest in acting began in high school and further blossomed when he was enrolled in Fullerton College, where he studied under acting coach Sal Romero. In 1987, he would land his first role, a bit part in Cheech Marin's Born in East LA, and would soon take on many supporting roles in other bit parts, including 1989's Back to the Future Part II. 1992 would see him play a credible portrayal of a tortured young Inuit native Alaskan in Map of the Human Heart, which would lead him to an audition for The Last of the Mohicans. The director thought Jason Scott Lee looked too Asian to play a Native American, however, he did suggest him for the lead role in Dragon, the Bruce Lee story. The first actor the production team had in mind was, of course, Bruce Lee's son, Brandon Lee. However, producer Rafael De Laurentiis thought Brandon didn't look Chinese enough for the role. Listen, Jim, I was raised in the valley. My dad's a white guy who's a dentist. Additionally, Brandon refused to play his father in a biopic as he thought it was strange to delve into his parents' love story. Jason Scott Lee, on the other hand, who was just turned down for a starring role in The Last of the Mohicans because he didn't look Native American enough, saw the chance to star as Bruce Lee as the perfect opportunity to launch his career. Um, you know, Bonnie Timmerman speaks highly of you. You, you did a wonderful audition for, for that film. And uh, she said, you, you, you look great. You get, you know, physically, you have a good body for it. I said, yeah, yeah, but you know, you know, this all show no go. It's like, <laughs> it ain't Bruce Lee, you know? Um. Prior to Dragon the Bruce Lee story, Jason had no martial arts training, but kept himself fit with surfing and gymnastics. Once cast, he would train in Jeet Kune Do, the style that Bruce Lee founded for just seven weeks before filming began. Luckily, he was able to adapt with ease under the tutelage of one of Bruce Lee's own students, Jerry Petit. The training was tough. Jason said in a later interview, I remember being on my knees, weeping for days and wondering how I was going to pull this off. He still remembers the exact moment that carrying the weight of Bruce Lee's legacy became too much for him. How can I be this person and and create this, this you know, illusion? And, um, you know, I'm really honest with myself, but when, and maybe too much so. And I said, I, I think you got the wrong guy. And, then, <laughs> And um, Rob said, you know what? Just because you answered it that way, we think you're the right guy. Huh. And because, because, because anybody who's an Asian American or any Asian whatsoever would jump at this chance and would lie through their teeth about every aspect of their background and their history as a martial artist in order to get the role. I had an emotional breakdown while I was training. Everything was too heavy, you know? It was too much pressure and I just fell apart, he said. Thankfully, Jason would receive sterling reviews for his portrayal of Bruce Lee while having his name on movie posters across the world. He was also featured in a video game based on the popular movie. The young actor's success in capturing the icon's moves and moods brought international celebrity seemingly overnight. The story in the film was endearing and entertaining, in part thanks to Rob Cohen's electrifying directing style. The rest of the praise went to Jason Scott Lee's amazing portrayal of the most recognizable martial artist who ever lived. It is the truth. Despite being lauded by critics for his performance in Dragon the Bruce Lee story, the career of Jason Scott Lee didn't exactly skyrocket as expected. Thought that'd be a little more exciting. So what happened? Of course, the Bruce Lee biopic was a key that opened many doors, but they all seemed to lead to the great outdoors. Jason couldn't seem to get near a role calling for street clothes. After Dragon, he'd appear in the cinematically beautiful yet box office bomb Rapa Nui, then later that same year in the live action The Jungle Book, playing the lead character of Mowgli. However, the demands of the Hollywood life were eventually not for him, and after spending some time with one foot in Hollywood and the other in the jungle, Jason decided to drop his manager and agent and live in Hawaii full time, in a self-sufficient farming compound that he called Pumu, which means simplicity. Several years later, in 1998, Jason would once again venture into the limelight to star alongside Kurt Russell in the sci-fi action film Soldier. Unfortunately, the film struggled to find an audience at the box office, as many action films would in the late 90s. 
From there, Jason would appear in several straight-to-video releases, such as Dracula 2 Ascension in 2001, Time Cop 2 The Berlin Decision in 2003, and The Prophecy Forsaken in 2005. Several more projects would come over the next decade plus, most notably 2016's Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, Sword of Destiny, and 2020's live-action Disney film Mulan. In 2021, Jason starred as a main role in the Disney Plus series Doogie Kamaloha, MD, a reboot of Doogie Hauser MD. Circling back to the sequel to Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, a film produced by Bay Logan, it's interesting to hear his thoughts about Jason Scott Lee based on Bay's own observations and conversations with the man. Jason, um, it's a funny story because I worked with him on Crouching Tiger 2 and he I, he had done, of a, he had did uh, Dragon the Bruce Lee story. And then because I worked with him, I had the chance to talk to him for many hours. And he said, in retrospect, he made the same bad decision that Brandon did. It was like, I did the Bruce Lee thing. I don't want to do any more action stuff. Um, mm -hmm. Like, for example, right after Dragon, they were trying to put together Green Hornet with George Clooney as the Green Hornet and Jason as Cato. And he just turned it down flat because he said, oh, I already did that. Yeah, and in he retrospect, he said he should have done a couple of action things. Um, and there was opportunities that I passed on that maybe I shouldn't have, you know, that were maybe great opportunities. But I don't know. I, I you know, I was just looking at it from a different perspective. Uh, I remember having the script speed on oh. my on my desk. You know, and then Keanu Reeves ended up doing it. And then there was Independence Day, which uh, Will Smith ended up doing. Wow. Um, so there was a lot of like these big, you know, kind of blockbuster type of films that uh, in my own little like weird, quirky way were just maybe were just that. Mm -hmm. And then but instead he did challenging films. He did like Rapa Nui, uh, Map of the Human Heart, Jungle Book, um, but nothing that really. He did Time know, Cop 2. The straight sometime video. after yeah he, he yeah. basically he, re he retreated to hawaii he was very involved with uh, very early involved in environmental projects where he would go into inner city communities and they would green the schools and the environment and it's really funny because uh sometime after that somebody said to me what happened to jason scott lee and i said you know i actually want to wonder what happened to us because when i look at his life and the way he was living his life day by day and really living his best life and uh maybe not being a Hollywood A-list superstar, but day by day, really doing something rewarding for him that helped the world. You almost think, hmm, maybe, <laughs> maybe you know, it's like, who's actually got this figured out? And he would occasionally come out and do a film. And the story with Crouching Tiger was, I was flying through Singapore, because I think we were planning, myself and the director, Yin Mo Peng, were gonna go to Scout in Malaysia, and we we're in Singapore, and I had one friend, well, you know, a friend, I had more than one, I have a friend in, I have more than one friend in the world and more than one friend in Singapore. So I call him Jimmy Tanaka, who's an actor. And I said, he was actually in Showdown Little Tokyo with uh, with Brandon Lee. So I call up Jimmy, he says, hey, I'm in town with you. And I actually thought about introducing him to Yun Wah Peng. And then he goes, hey, you'll never guess who's here, um, Jason Scott Lee. Because I think Jason's wife is Singaporean. And he said, but he's flying out in a couple of hours. I said, no, get him to this hotel. He's got to meet uh, Yun Wah Peng. He should be the villain in Crouching Tiger 2. And it was like that. And then he just showed up and he looked like he could, he's incredible. He looked like he could shoot uh, pickup shots for Dragon, you know, even though it was all those years ago. So Yun Will Peng just says, well, I said, yes. And then we had some other issues because he was committed to do uh, uh, The King and I in mm -hmm. uh, the musical in Melbourne. And so I, I, I don't know how we finessed that. I mean, I guess statute of limitations is out, so we're probably okay. We got him out of that anyway. And then he came to New Zealand, and uh, it was wonderful having him in the movie. I mean, he was great, physically great. And, um, yeah, I, I, I almost feel, you know, I was talking in the past about maybe there's a third, there's a third option. One is people have an impressive debut, and people don't, but they're unlikable. Second is that they, they, they uh, don't have a good team and events conspire against them, even though they have great potential. Third is maybe somebody who um, faces what it would take to become a superstar mm -hmm. and decides not to do it. And I think Jason, maybe he'll hear this and be mad at me, but I think Jason maybe falls into that category that in the wake of Dragon, it was like, do you want to do Green Hornet? Do you want to do Kung Fu movies? Uh, do you want to do this? Do you want to do that? And he wasn't going to pay that price. And after a while of doing interesting films, I think his feeling was, well, you know, I'm just going to devote life to the things that give me pleasure. 
And if Hollywood will not accept me on my terms, I'll just take a step back. So maybe a third path is somebody who sees what they would be required to become to succeed in that way and chooses not to. Uh, have you seen the documentary um, Searching for the Sugar Man? I have not. It's basically about this folk rock guitarist who vanished um, after two failed albums. And um, the rumors were that he'd shot himself on stage, set himself on fire, been killed by a jealous fan. And his albums became fantastically successful in apartheid South Africa. Hmm. So he had a huge following in South Africa. And they would look at the albums and try to decide. And I mean, it's a spoiler alert, but halfway through the documentary, we find out, having been told that he's dead, that he's alive. And no, no, had no idea that he was a superstar in South Africa. <laughs> <laughs> and then they fly in there and they have concerts and everything. But they're interviewing um, one of his daughters and um, she, the, the interviewer says, do you feel that he was cheated out of a career as a superstar by the fact that he, he became like a, a laborer? He was carrying fridges upstairs. He was renovating apartments. And she said something really interesting. She said that um, he did not have the obvious rewards that the rock star life would have given him. But the labor, the work, the life he had now provided a deeper award in him that was mm -hmm. not as visible, but nonetheless valuable. And I found that really touching and an interesting um, observation of somebody who could have chosen another path or could have been on another path. But they, and I think Jason's in that category of somebody where they live life day by day on their own terms and there's an integrity and satisfaction in doing that, right? Um, so yeah, you should look at the documentary. It was a really great documentary. I loved it. So yeah, it, it sounds I like it. The Bush Sugar Man. Oh, you can check. That third option you meant, mentioned about Jason Scott Lee is very interesting yeah. because I think people just in general have that like, you know, narrow way they view things, and you know, myself included, mm -hmm. and just assume like, okay, this guy had that huge debut. He could have been a big star, and then like he's he didn't become a household name per se. So you just like, oh, then he fell in some way, but it's like, not really, because that's probably not even what, what he wanted to do. So for himself, he, you know, like the general audience might think that he's a failure as far as like Hollywood and stardom goes, but in his own life, uh, you know, if he's content and happy, it's well, like, I think, so. I, think a there is a, I agree with you. I think, I think there's a big, and I actually, you know, can uh, reflect this in my own experience, which is you hear about people saying stuff and you know, kind of like critical and you think, but the fact is none of us actually live online. We haven't got the William Gibson world yet. We live our lives day by day. Mm -hmm. And the fact is there's a perception online of people say, understandably, whatever happened to Jason Lee, Jason Scott Lee, yada, 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 he failed, he disappeared, whatever. But Jason's living his life, I can tell you, day by day, hugely rewarding. I'm the same. There's frustrations and challenges and things have happened in my life. But, and people say, oh, you know, whatever they want to say. But none of that matters. What matters is I wake up every day and enormously rewarded by the life I lead now. I think it's a life I deserve. And, um, you know, if, if anybody could live my life, they would enjoy it. It's like yours, you know, all the dreams of my youth uh, came to fruition. A couple of nightmares as well, but that's, you know, this, this is samsara. This is the life that we lead in now. But the fact is people, I think, really buy into the idea that you're defined by what people are saying on Twitter. And I just look mm -hmm. at that and think it's completely no. Like um, you have a film, we have a film market here, film market in Hong Kong. And I'm not sure why, but um, in the time that I've lived here, there haven't really been many uh, white people making films. I, mean, I think probably I'm the only one. So I would be at film mart dealing with somebody in front of me about making a movie. And then in the wings, there might be somebody else muttering or whatever they, whatever was going on with them. But that's how I look at the internet. It's just vo voices off. Now, my life is what's immediately in front of me, whether it's my children, whether it's training, whether it's a book I'm writing, whether it's something I'm watching and listening to and experience. That's my life. And if you allow yourself to be too distracted by all the you know chitter chatter, of course, you can never be happy. Mm. You know, I've actually had the conversation with people and they've said, I, I said to them, yeah, you, you can't, you, you're giving too much credence and too much emphasis to these platforms and wanting everybody to love you and wanting everybody to say good things about you. And Jason's a good example of somebody who's not in the least bitter. 
or resentful, but he's just made a choice about how he wants to live life. I mean, and by the way, we should all look like Jason, right? I remember when he did uh, Mulan and the, they did some press because he was in that movie as well. Somewhat recently, and, yeah, sure. Yeah, it was also, it's, it's funny because we did uh, Crouching Tiger with him and Donnie in New Zealand and then Mulan went back to, to New Zealand. So, mm. you know, that was, that was kind of, I don't know, New Zealand must have been the place what an amazing, it's a great place to film. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, make sure to click the like button, subscribe to the channel, and if you want to support me even more, check out the YouTube membership that I offer. I give you exclusive content, interview segments that I have not released on the channel are coming up, and also other behind the scenes type content and more. Anyway, check that out and please consider supporting the channel to be a supreme member of the Brotherhood.